What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Matt Panella with Matt Bangs Wood. Today I'm going to be going over a couple basics of structural plants, showing you things such as shear wall schedules, where hold downs go, and placement of certain things. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button down below. Leave a like on this video as well. We're gonna jump right in. I've got a set of plans here. This was for a project that we completed a while back. You guys might have seen it, might not have. This is season two's house. If you guys wanna watch that, click the icon in the top right hand corner. So now for the sake of our client's privacy, I've gone ahead and cut out the right hand side. The only thing it has listed here is your job name, address, and then the architect or the structural engineer up here. This is S1.1. This is where you're going to reference all of your pages, 2.1, 2.2, so on and so forth. We'll get into that a little bit later. Up here we've got structural notes. This is just notes for anything from framing lumber, concrete notes, reinforcing steel notes. This will tell you, let's see here, all plywood shall be graded and stamped in accordance. Basically it tells you what they want for your roof sheathing, 15, 30 seconds. Floor sheathing is three quarter, wall sheathing is three eighths. This is one good thing to note from here. They want the anchor bolts, five eighths, located within one foot maximum from each end of your plate break. So when you have a plate break, Say you have a 32 foot wall, you've got two 16 foot pieces of plate. They want anchor bolts one foot on both sides of the splice. I'm not going to sit on this page and explain too much because all I'll be doing is just reading to you guys. If you guys have a set of plans, I do suggest flipping through all this and checking it out before you start your framing. So we're gonna start here with S1.2. This is all of our typical details. This will give you a better understanding of what's going on. Let's find a good example for us here. So here's one that people ask about quite a bit. This is our top plate splice. This is going to show you what they want you to do where your top plates break. You have your list of plates here, 2x4, 2x6, 14 16 Ds, 20 16 Ds, 28 16 Ds. Those will be spread out on both sides of the break. That'll make sure that you get the values that you need. Everything stays together. If you have a break in your plates and it's not nailed off good on both sides, that's a big pivot point right there when lifting your walls. When you blast the heck out of both sides with the nails that they want, everything stays together pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and move on here, that way I can get to what I want to talk about today. So here we're on S2.1, this is foundation plan. This is where you're going to reference for your concrete. Since I'm only going to be explaining framing to you guys, I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but this is a page that we actually reference when it comes to laying out all of our hold downs. As you can see, everything is highlighted along here. So I have a video where we went and did all of the hold down bolts on the winery project. You guys can click the icon and check that out. Using this page here and a couple others, we referenced where all these hold downs had to be, what structural member they were attaching to, and from there we were able to accurately place all of our hold down bolts. As you can see here, this one is an HDU2, that one is as well. Looks like they both attach to double two by. Therefore, when laying out, you know that you could pull three inches back and then we always try to stay within an inch and three quarter and two inches to center a bolt. So you would go three inches, five inches out, that's the center of your hold down bolt. Same thing for this one here, it's double, five inches out, place your bolt. And that's the same for all of these. You do need to reference other structural pages to make sure that they are wanting a double two by instead of say a six by six. So up here we have HDU2s attaching to, it looks like a six by six on both sides. You need to double check though because that could have a double trimmer and then a six by six, same thing over here. You're gonna reference a couple other structural pages before placing that hold down. Enough of foundation plans. That's where checking all this comes into play because if you didn't know that that was double two by six trimmer, when it came time to framing this, that hold down would be in the wrong spot. You need to verify all these when going to place your hold down bolts. Now we're on S2.2, this is floor framing. I can assure you guys, this may look hectic. It probably is. Now when you look at it from afar, everything just kind of looks like it's jumbled up in here. When you sit and focus on one area, you'll notice that things get a little bit more clear. So we're gonna focus up here for a second. Five and a quarter by 24 inch PSL. As you can see, it runs along that line right there, which if we look up here at the framing plan symbol and line legend, it tells you what every one of their markings means. Plywood shear wall per plan, wall below per plan, beam header. That's what we're looking at right now because that's what we're dealing with there. So we'll focus back up on this section here. We've got a five and a quarter by 24 PSL. As you can see, the dashed lines run all the way across. And then we've got ECCQ beam to header. So we're going to be using an ECCQ for beam to header attachment right over a window. Since we've got that big load getting carried by a small little window here, we have six by six trimmers and four by six trimmers here. 
for our header on that window, we've got three inch and three quarter by 11 and seven eighths LVLs. That is not typical for a window. The only reason we have that is because it's carrying the gnarly load of that 24 inch PSL across the place. So as I mentioned, everything might seem like it's all jumbled up in here, but when you sit down and focus on this beam right here, everything makes a little bit more sense. You can see that it comes across here. You've got hangers on both sides, comes across, lands over here on an ECCQ, that section's done. So by taking the time to sit down and look at just this one little section, you can do the same thing with everything else. Now, I'm not gonna be able to teach you guys how to frame a place based off of plans, but I can show you how to understand them a little bit better. As I showed you up here with the framing plan symbol and line legend, that detail right there is a structural detail. So let's check that out. We've got 41 on page S3.3. That is detail 41 on page S3.3. So let's just fast forward to there. I'll show you guys that. So once we go to S3.3, which is the page it was referencing, we're gonna find detail number 41, beam cap to steel column. So here they're gonna give you a breakdown of what it should look like. Since you can't really get a good idea looking at the floor framing plans unless you truly understand it, this gives you a better idea. You have your post going up, a CCQ to hold both sides of the beam that come and split right there. Up on top, it says that you need a Simpson ST6224 fully nailed. That's a strap detail that's gonna run across the brake right there. So almost everything on a set of plans is going to have a reference point just like this, where you can come and look at the post, the cap, and the beams running across. So since we're on floor framing plan, you can get an understanding of what they're using for the floor system as well. Right here, it says inch and three quarter by 14, LVL at 16 inch on center, notch at deck. So our LVL is hung off of the 24 inch PSL that ran through the center of this place and ran out this way. They notched at the deck and then sloped outwards. Now here you can see a number six in a circle. That's another little reference point, but since it's not showing you a page to look at, such as this S3.3, it's going to be on the same page you're already looking at. Let's find that real quick. So we'll find number six up here. Provide double joist under all walls where walls run parallel to joist. So you know, after reading that right there, that all these number sixes in a circle are going to be double joist, or in this case here, LVL. So we've got double LVL there, 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 there. And as we go over to the side that has 14 inch TJIs, we know that we're gonna have double TJIs here, 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 there, and there. So when you're reading plans, the biggest goal is not to get overwhelmed. While this can seem like a lot of work, and this floor system was actually one of the craziest floor systems we've put together, now we've gone over the beam that runs through here, how it hangs off of here, the post in the center, which we referenced by that detail right there, the LVLs that notch out here, the TGIs that go out there, we know where they double up. We're looking good. So back to our symbol and line legend. We've got our plywood shear wall per plan. It's going to look just like that line there with a triangle with a number inside of it. Remember that. So looking here, we can see the five in a triangle. We have a shear wall running from there over to there. Remember number five. Now it's going to be listed on a structural detail, but mine's on S3.1. Yours will be different. Here is your shear wall schedule. Now keep in mind yours could be different than this. I know a lot of states only use crown staples to hold on all their sheathing. Here in California, we are in a seismic zone, therefore we have crazy building codes, nailing to follow, inspections to follow, it gets fun. But remember that five in a triangle? We're gonna follow this line here to tell us everything. Unless you're into structural ratings, that shear per linear foot isn't going to do much for you. But if we follow that five out, you can see that material used is 3 8 plywood, one side only, Nails used are eight Ds. Edge nailing is four inches. Field nailing is 12, so that's a four and 12 nail pattern. Four around the outside of the sheet, 12 in the center. And then here they mention blocking. If you don't have perimeter nailing all the way around, they want blocking to where you do. And then as we get farther out, we've got bottom plate connection here. This is for a subfloor only. We're not building on a subfloor. This was slab on grade. Follow number five out, you've got 16 Ds at four inches on center, blasted through the bottom plate into the subfloor. Here's what we're gonna be looking at. We've got five eighths anchor bolts for a slab. If we follow our number five across, we've got 32 inches on center, they want anchor bolts. That can change though, depending on the shear wall that you have. Say you had something like 10 down here, 16 inches on center for your anchor bolts. We're gonna make a quick little interruption in this video to talk about a company called Handyworks. Handyworks is an app on your phone, super easy to use, and it takes the hard work out of finding a loyal and honest person to do work on your home. When you get on the app to sign up, you have to do a background check, super easy as well. As long as you're not a criminal, don't rob people or kill people, 
you should be good. From there, you'll put your insurance on there. And then lastly, if the job is over X amount of dollars, you'll have your license number on there as well. Now on this app, people can download it, log in, Say they've got a problem with facial board on the corner of their house, they need it replaced. Handyworks takes all the trouble out of everything and will go through, price the job out, and send it to you. These people can come in contact with you via Handyworks and hire you to do the job. Now the best part about this app is you can find me on there. and the center of California, a little tiny dot, there I am. One last thing, this app does not just cater to carpentry and framing, every trade is on there. You know how many electricians do side work? This isn't a one-time shout out. This is a company that I'm working with throughout the year of 2020. If you guys are interested, click the link in the description below. Hope to see you on there. Back to the video. So now let's go up to our roof framing plan. This is S2.3. This is going to look a little bit more like what you guys are used to seeing. The other page was kind of hectic. That floor system got crazy. Now we've got the same symbol and line legend here. Without all the clutter from the other page, you can see that we have a shear sure wall here, number four. You can reference that on the page where you found the shear sure wall schedules. Number four there as well, four here, four here. And with that, you know that you're gonna have OSV or plywood, whatever you may use, along there, along here, and you know your nail schedules as well. So once you start reading structural plans, everything gets to be pretty simple. All they're doing is making sure that the structure is safe and sound. Like I mentioned in the architectural, Architects make things pretty and structural make things work. These guys here are going to make sure that these 2x6 trimmers hold up the weight of the world while the architect is going to make sure that the trellis out here looks good. The whole time while you're reading structural details, everything has reference points. And if for some reason they don't, what you're going to do is send in what they call an RFI. It's a request for information. In order to do that, you have to know where you're talking about though. That's what I'm going to show you right now. We're going to talk about grid lines. These here are grid lines, A, B, C, D, and they run all the way up the building. Now let's just make up a reason here. Let's say these six by six posts didn't work out for some reason. Why? I have no idea, but they didn't. So we've got grid line A that comes across over to our six by six posts that we're having trouble with. We've got grid line three up here that comes down pretty dang close. So you can reference grid lines A and three to pinpoint a location as to where you're having trouble. From there, they can get down to here and say, okay, yeah, this is what you need to do in order to fix that. You have grid lines on every single project you do, everywhere. They are on every set of plans and you can use those to reference a certain location. Say you had trouble with this staircase out here. D comes across, four comes down. You could say, hey, this four by 12 dug fur isn't working out here. Is there anything we can do to fix this? And from there, he knows that you're referencing the staircase coming up to the third story rather than the staircase that's on the first to second floor. So now let's review a few things. We went over the general notes in the beginning, which tell you notes for anything from special inspection to framing lumber, reinforced steel, whatever your scope of work is if you're framing, it'll only take you a minute or two to read through this, flip through it, it's worth it. From there, we went to the structural details, explained a few things there. This is where you guys are gonna wanna look if you don't understand how something goes together. It'll show you anything from how a header is supposed to be framed in to all of your hold downs, anchor bolts. Here we've got truss to non-bearing wall. They want the Simpson DTC truss clips, allowing movement in the trusses. Structural details will explain everything. Material used, how to use it, and where to use it. References if you're confused. We went over the foundation plan here and explained to that where you have your hold downs, you need to check the structural member, along with that, your trimmers, to make sure that your hold down is placed far enough back to work out. If you have double trimmers and you didn't expect it, you might have just screwed yourself on placement of that hold down. We flipped to the floor system for just a quick minute, explained the PSL that runs through the center here. We've got that five by five post in the center that I talked to you guys through, explained how the split was there, the strap went across the top of it. Along with that, you guys got a good understanding of shear walls and how they work. You've got your triangle with a number in it. From there, all you have to do is find your shear wall schedules and check that out. Not only that, we learned about structural details as well, which is the little circle with the detail number and the sheet number. That little detail is always pointing to something to reference. You can go to that page and see exactly how it's laid out on any of these details here. That's a big one. For any of you guys that are confused, nine times out of 10, there's a structural detail that you can come look at to say, hey, this is how this guardrail is gonna be framed. You've got two DTT2Zs, Simpson A35s to side to joist, and you've got four by posts out here, four foot on center. Within seconds, you managed to learn a lot more about the system than just looking at the floor plan here. And then lastly, we learned about RFIs, a request for information. 
If you're ever confused about something and you work for a framing contractor, chances are you should contact them. Say you have a staircase that isn't working out. On this build in particular, we had a staircase that ran up and the stair stringer ran right through the center of a window. We sent in an RFI as we cut that first stringer and asked him, hey, is there anything we can do for this? Get rid of the window, move the window, let us know. From there, we were able to block that window out get rid of it completely, and put a new one in in a lower location. You are not allowed to just move stuff in a building though. You can't even move one window. Everything is planned for a very good reason. So do not move a single thing without consulting with everybody. And lastly, we learned about grid lines today. Say you have a problem in a specific location. Like we used as an example today, this six by six post out here. You'd reference grid lines A and three and say, hey, this six by six post isn't working out what can we do? From there they'll get back to you and they know that you're referencing this 6x6 post because you use those two grid lines. Instead of saying, I'm having trouble with this 6x6 post, what can we do? What 6x6 post? You've got 50 of them in this house. Overall, I hope this information helped you out a little bit. If you're new to reading plans, chances are it did. If you've been reading plans for a while, chances are you know everything I just said. Either way, I hope you guys were able to take something away from this. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, give it a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button down below. It helps me out a ton. But right about now, I'm losing my voice, so I need to head on out. If you guys want more videos regarding plan reading, please let me know down in the comments below. My next step in this series is to show you how to cross-reference architectural and structural to bring them together. Every day on a build, you have to reference both of them. So knowing how to put two and two together is a very important step. Let me know if you guys wanna see that down below. But that is all we have time for, guys. I will catch you next time. Bang on.